Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I am Ari Engel, the director of Creative Community for Peace. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Creative Community for Peace is a nonprofit entertainment industry organization comprised of prominent members of the entertainment community who have come together to promote the arts as a bridge to peace. Uh, we also work to counter rising anti-Semitism in the entertainment industry and galvanize support against the cultural boycott of Israel. Uh, for instance, we are actively working with a number of social media sites to tackle Jewish hate on these sites, including YouTube, Spotify, and TikTok. And we've been directly responsible for the removal of hundreds of videos and playlists. Uh, however, as a nonprofit organization, uh, we rely on donations to do our work and even to bring you these panel sessions. So please consider making a donation. And for anyone that wants to sponsor a panel, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at info at creativecommunityforpeace.com. That's info at creativecommunityforpeace.com. And to learn more about our organization and to donate, you can simply go to ccfpeace.com. That is ccfpeace.com or creativecommunityforpeace.com. Uh, I'm very excited for today's panel discussion with leading voices in the Israeli Ethiopian community about their history, their culture, life in Israel, and how it manifests itself in art. For all of those joining us in Zoom, you can leave questions in the Q&A section, and we'll get to as many as possible towards the end of the uh, discussion. To briefly introduce our guests, first we have Naftali Aklum, who is a lecturer and educator on the Ethiopian community in Israel. Naftali's parents were among the first Ethiopian Jews to immigrate to Israel via Sudan, and his older brother was the first Ethiopian Jew to make the journey to Jerusalem via Sudan. Uh, this set in motion the remarkable secret operation known as Operation Moses, uh, the story that served as the inspiration for the Netflix movie, The Red Sea Diving Resort, for which Naftali advised on. Hi, Naftali. Hi, greetings. Uh, how are you doing? Next, we have Aveva Dessa, who is an artist, singer, and songwriter. She is a first-generation immigrant from Ethiopia. Her parents made Aliyah during the famine of 1984 after being airlifted to Israel as part of Operation Moses. Uh, she brings her fascinating life story into her music, creating an inspiring and empowering experience, which uses traditional Ethiopian sounds infused into her soul pop songs. How you doing? Uh, our next panelist is Heywan Meshesha, who is the daughter of Ethiopian immigrants. Uh, she is the lead singer of the band Ground Heights, which is a group that combines languages and rhythms from Ethiopia alongside the musicality and influence of Israel's next generation of musicians. Uh, the group's combination of Ethiopian music alongside Heywan's deep knowledge of the Amharic language gives her music and the band a truly unique sound. How you doing, Heywan? Uh, and our moderator for today is Ashagar Araro, an Ethiopian activist who was born in Ethiopia and immigrated to Israel as an infant during the 1991 Operation Solomon. Um, in the Israeli army, she rose to the rank of lieutenant in the paratroopers brigade and then got her degree in public diplomacy, uh, or public policy, sorry. And she serves as the coordinator for the Young Ambassadors Program, which worked with schools around Israel to identify and equip young Israelis with the tools and experience necessary to pursue a career in policy. Alongside this work, she established the Ethiopian Heritage Center that is interactive and a first of its kind. It serves as a place for people to explore and appreciate the story of Ethiopian Jews in Israel, and I advise everybody visiting Israel to make sure you check it out. And with that, I turn it over to you, Ashagar. Hey, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for everyone that joins. It's great to see my friends here. Uh, so we're going to have an amazing day. So we're going to have a, an amazing ta a, a panel because we are amazing, talented people. And I will start with the basic. I would love to hear about the story of your family coming to Israel. Uh, Abeva, I would love you if you can start. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Ashagir, you actually heard this story a few times, but uh, we have a lot of people who don't know it. So uh, my family came to Israel in Operation Moses in 1984. Um, so my parents had like, they had three kids. Um, sorry, they had four kids and my mom was pre pregnant when they started this journey. Um, and actually the reason that they chose to leave Ethiopia uh, for people who don't know the history is they suffered from persecution and they weren't able to live their religion as open and as proud as they wanted. Uh, they kept that, this religion for thousands of years. Um, 
But the story about this journey, so they started, decided one day to just leave everything behind uh, and started walking to Sudan. Uh, this journey took for like almost, I think, three weeks walking till they got to the refugee camp in, in Sudan. Uh, it was a really hard uh, journey for them. Uh, in the camp, they stayed for a few months until uh, the Israeli military came to take them. And in, during this uh, long time, they suffered from diseases and uh, they didn't have enough food. Um, my mom uh, gave birth to her child and um, they, th my parents lost two kids during those three months. Uh, all those stories that I heard, uh, I'm still gathering all the pieces, uh, but this is uh, like a short uh, way to tell it. Thank you very much. Uh, Iwan, would you like to tell your story? Of course. <laughs> so my parents also came in Operation Moses in 1984, like Aviva's parents, um, but they actually flew to Israel uh, via airplane and they came to Kiryat Yam, which is a northern city, small city, small town in Israel. And uh, it is more or the same like everybody's story. So this is like in short. Thank you very much. Naftali? Yeah, uh, good to see you, Shagya. Long time. Hey, long time, I'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my story is uh, I immigrated to Israel in 1980 when I was one year old uh, with my parents and uh, 11 brothers and sisters. My family story is a story of a pioneering family. My family is the first family to immigrate to Israel through the journey to Sudan, a journey of more than 300 miles. Um, but it all started in 1977. Uh, in 1977, there was an agreement between the state of Israel and Ethiopia. We call it the arm deal, a deal that Ethiopia will allow uh, Ethiopian Jews to leave the country. And in return, the state of Israel will give weapon and advice to Mangisto Haile Mariam. My brother, may he rest in peace, was the one that organized the Jews from the northern side of Ethiopia and brought them to Addis Ababa. I will not go into de details, but uh, this, this deal was canceled and my brother became a wanted man. And then he escaped to Sudan. And uh, when he arrived to Sudan, he started to send letters to his contacts telling them, it's me, Fered Aklum, I'm in Khartoum, Sudan, uh, please save me. And this is how the Mossad arrived to Sudan and um, the pilot of how Ethiopian Jews will come from Ethiopia to Sudan was a pilot on my family. And uh, thank God we made it and the rest is history. Thank you very much, Naftali. I think uh, what is very similar to each story and combining in general the history of Ethiopian Jews is the resilience of the people. The people, the resilience of keeping the Jewish identity when it was very hard for them and the resilience where they work so hard, you know, to go back to their homeland, go back to Israel. And as Abeba mentioned, a lot of families have, have a lot of people would say in every family you have at least one lost someone that you know that lost someone and this journey the number right now is over 4,000 people that have lost their lives have perished during the journey and um, for you guys everyone that i see came very early uh, what do you think or you remember your family the idea of jerusalem or israel and what actually happened when they came to, um, to israel naftali can you elaborate yeah um so I guess that it's not only my family, but the whole community in Ethiopia dreamed for 2000, 2000 years about Jerusalem. And as we all know, we have a special holiday unique only for the Ethiopian Jews that called the Sigd that we celebrate 50 days after Yom Kippur. This holiday shows the longing of the Ethiopian Jews to Jerusalem. And, um, 
when my family came, we arrived to the south, to a city called Beersheba, the capital city of the Negev. And uh, it was not Jerusalem. It was <laughs> south of Israel. And um, Beersheba today, it's not Beersheba 40 years ago. So it was very difficult and not easy. And uh, the neighborhood uh, that I grew up uh, was a neighborhood that had maybe 90% Ethiopian Jews. Uh, the school that I went had the same amount, which means we didn't really get to see the Israeli society. So there was a lot of challenges uh, when we came. It was not what we, ex uh, 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 we wanted or expect, uh, uh, feel that Jerusalem will be. Uh, but uh, yeah, the beginning was tough, not easy. Okay. Abeva, can you tell us about the idea of what your parents imagined Israel, what, uh, what they thought was going to be, like what they knew about Israel when they were in Ethiopia? I, I can only say, do you hear me good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I can, I can only say that my mom, uh, I basically most of the things that I've heard is from my mom. Uh, and every time I ask her, about Ethiopia and coming here to Israel. Uh, she's always grateful and mm -hmm. uh, proud and so happy to, to be here. Even with all the struggles that we as Ethiopian community uh, suffer here in Israel, uh, she still see the good in this land and she still thanks God every day for getting here and being able to uh, accomplish this dream. Thank you very much. Hey, Iowa, can you tell us about the idea of your family? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Will you repeat the question, please? I'm saying, what is your family thought before they, what was the idea of Israel? What they thought? So, so it's pretty much, I'd say like, both of the both both of you guys it's like they thought jerusalem is you know the same as it's written in the bible everything is good and everything is wonderful and all jewish people will be here and everything will be exactly as they dreamt but um they came here and, and it was different but i can relate to what abeva said especially my mother as well. She is so grateful, so happy to be here, even though it's not the same as she imagined or prayed or dreamt of. But um, yeah, it's pretty much the same as everybody else. Thank you very much. I think it's something that's very common in the Ethiopian community, especially in our gen family generation, as the people that have been praying uh, three times a day for the possibility of going back to their homeland. Just the possibility of being in Israel is everything for them. And they understand yeah. they are the yeah. first generation that has actually been able to live the dream of going back to Jerusalem. So it's very, very strong. And that's why they are very, very grateful for what they have here. Um, we have a three, a two amazing artists and we have, uh, and, and Naftali is also, uh, were, uh, part of the uh, one of the movies that we're about to talk about. Uh, so I would like to uh, talk with Abeva about her art. Uh, uh, before that, I would love if you can uh, hear a small clip, is it so, if it's possible. Yeah. Yes, one moment. Are we going to hear something? Yes. Yeah, one we want to hear your beautiful music. For those okay. of you who doesn't follow Aveva, <laughs> you should do it. I'm a great fan. She has amazing, amazing music. Thank you. 
give you all of my trust She gave me promises in return Guess that you never thought I would make it on my own And when you opened the door for me I thought I had a real chance To show I'm worth just like you But you pushed me to the end I've been sitting here for too long Got me thinking I won't make it My fear, my doubt only make you stronger See, time will prove that you've been wrong I won't let you put me down no more I won't let you put me down no more Won't let you, won't let you put me down Put me down, down, down Won't let you, won't let you put me down Okay, we're back. Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, so it's, I'm very happy we put this song because because it's one of my favorite songs. Uh, Abeba, I know that you I had a couple of events with you, and every time you use your platform to tell your story. Um, how do you feel like? What is the main message you're trying to bring with your art, with your music? Oh, okay. So actually, I want to thank you for choosing that song because it's actually my favorite project too. Uh, not only the song, uh, the whole project of working with those amazing women that I got the chance to meet and get to know them uh, and being able to uh, put the light on those beautiful and strong women that actually we don't see that a lot in our uh, TVs or uh, media platforms. Uh, and if I had to say uh, in a few words, what is my message? Uh, it's hard, but basically <laughs> I would say that I am trying uh, to spread love, to spread education, uh, to, to uh, help people maybe find a way to uh, understand that we are all the same and we are all equal and we are all worthy and uh, just hoping that we get the chance to live here in peace and with love with every different community groups identities beautiful <laughs> beautiful very very beautiful uh as someone that's been in your uh, performance i feel like every single person that walks out feel the sense of unity and love and connection and and mm -hmm. that is something is very amazing for artists uh, i want uh, what do you say your message uh, when you perform what are you trying what you're trying to bring to, to your audience i would have to say that for me it's um let me just let me rephrase it when i grew up i always 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 was so proud and my heritage i was always like so happy when my parents came to school and loved everything about our culture and i grew up i had the the luck to grow up with my grandmother i was born in israel but since she lived with us i had to speak amharic and uh, this is why I know Amharic relatively well. And with that, I can write music. And uh, to me, I would say that it, it would be to be proud of your heritage, of your roots, not being afraid to show who you are through music or whatever it is that you choose to do. And um, this is pretty much it because we as, as Ethiopian Jews, Beta Isra, we are like a constant reminder to the Jewish people all over the world and in Israel to be specific, are like reminding all the time, like this is what we are here for. This is what we came to Israel for. And let us not forget our heritage and what it is that we need to do and to just like I've ever said, spread love among, you know, the different uh, adult cultures, uh, different groups, Jewish groups, to be specific for me. Um, and to, to just remind them that this is what, 
what we are here for. Um, this is what I try to do best with our music. That's great. Uh, do you use a specific part of the culture or music uh, that relate to Ethiopia in your own music? Yeah, of course. A lot of our, I mean, I write my music in Amharic, a lot of it actually. Um, but can you just be more specific? Because I'm not sure I understand your question. In Kumba, so you said uh, specific tools maybe, or sound of music that is more traditional, or uh, dress, or something more Ethiopian culture. That you, do you use I, it? I'd say that we're not using like traditional tools, music tools, but we are trying to um, uh, imitate the, the Ethiopian groove, uh, the Ethiopian, uh, Karar or Masenko through the electric uh, guitar, which really brings an innovative uh, kind of music to to the world and makes it more, I would say, uh, uh, communicative to the to the audience. This is what we do because I'm always saying that I'm like I was born in Israel. I am an Israeli with Ethiopian heritage and roots, and they are deep roots but i am a mix of stuff i'm not only one thing so it will be shown in my music i'm not trying to imitate anything because i'm not like an ethiopian who was born and raised and know every aspect of being ethiopian but i'm just trying to bring that with the sounds that i heard and grew up on and the the music that i I, I've heard along the years and just mixing it to, into whatever it is that we are as first generation of Ethiopian immigrants, Ethiopian Jewish immigrants. That is amazing. I think it's a lot about Israeli because we come from different cultures, different countries, different backgrounds, and then we come different here. Influences. Different influences, correct? And then we come come here and we take what we can from our culture and combine it to this something that called Israel. So with this yeah. mind and, and with this in mind, I would love to hear one of your songs. Uh, so we'll have one one clip now. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, one moment. Thank you. We're here. Uh, first of all, you you look stunning in the video. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and you have great Amaric. You don't have like an okay Amaric. You have great Amaric. <laughs> 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 so let's put it out there. Uh, Naftali, uh, yeah. for the 
for the people that were unfortunate enough to see the great movie, uh, The Great uh, Diving the, uh, Resort, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the movie and how it became and what were, uh, were your action for the, uh, for the movie? Yeah, so The Red Sea Diving Resort, it's a movie that tells the story of how the Mossad saved uh, the Ethiopian Jews uh, from the refugee camps in Sudan and brought them to the diving resort and from the resort to Israel. Uh, three years ago, I got a call from Gidi Raff, who is the director of the film, and he offered me to be an image consulate for the film. Of course, I was uh, very happy. It means that our story for the first time is coming to Hollywood. Uh, my wish was that through the film, the world will know our amazing Aliyah story. But unfortunately, the film glorifies uh, the Mossad people and less emphasize on the journey of the Ethiopian Jews. Uh, I can say that I'm not happy with the end result of the film at all. Uh, but there is an, but in everything that is bad, you you need to try to see the good. And the good is that the film raised people awareness to the story of our community. Uh, a lot of people, when they see the movie, the first thing that they want to do is to learn more and to educate themselves more about uh, the Ethiopian community. Today, there is a, a narrative that we are trying to change, uh, the narrative of saving. Uh, when we grow up, we grow up knowing that the state of Israel saved our parents from Sudan and brought them to Israel, which is true. I mean, they did amazing job uh, and they brought us to Israel. But one thing they forgot, they forgot to tell how much our parents are heroes. And they are the real heroes. And uh, when we grow up, we didn't know that. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, he one, you said that you were proud of your parents. My generation, we were not proud of our parents because we always knew, oh, the government of Israel saved them and brought them. We never knew the stories of the journey to Sudan and how much our parents sacrificed in order to be here how much they left behind their house, their land, their properties. Uh, the 4,000 Ethiopian Jews that didn't make it and died on the way. So going into this film, I wanted that uh, to be the focus of the, of the movie. But um, I guess there is a lot of politics in Hollywood. And um, unfortunately, as I said before, I'm not happy with the uh, end result of the film. But I can tell you that we are working on another movie. And this time, the movie will be from the Ethiopian Jewish people's side of the story. So we will correct that. And um, I'm looking forward for that. Amen Thank to that. that. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Naftali. I really connect with what you said. Um, as I said in the beginning, as I've been introduced, one of the things we're doing, uh, we're building Ethiopian Israeli Heritage Center. And the idea of the center was to reclaim our story talking about the people and their journey and their heroes is not taking away from what Israel have done in order to bring us here, uh, but to tell the full story of a community that survived over 2,000 years without any connection to the diaspora and will still be able to preserve the Jewish identity. Although they were persecuted, although it was danger for their life, they didn't, they didn't give away their identity was the most important part of them. And even after that, They've made an, I think, a miraculous journey. Think about it. People walking over 500 miles in the middle of the desert from one country to another under this idea of a promised land, like someone told them. 
this is a very brave group of people and it's something that we as a community should be very very proud of what our parents our um, grandparents have done in order for us to be here and we should celebrate that and tell the stories because i truly believe that story ha stories have the power to change people's mind and opinions and with that in mind i would love to uh, see the trailer for the movie mm -hmm. by the way uh Shager, uh, Michael, yeah. K, Michael K. Williams, who play my brother in the movie, was so moved from the story of our community. Those days, he's doing a documentary film in Ethiopia. That wow. is amazing. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that is amazing, amazing story. I recommend, although it's not the full story, of course, I truly recommend people uh, that are here to watch as a startup, like a start to understand uh, the Ethiopian Jewish community and uh, advise you to learn more about our heritage and history because it's really very, very interesting. I'm not biased in any way, I promise you. Uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would love to hear um, what is your thought when I say the, the word Ethiopian Israeli, what this means to you as being a black woman, Ethiopian Israeli, what does what this sentence mean to you? Or a black man. I will ask you, Nastali, <laughs> don't worry. Your time will come. <laughs> yeah, ladies first. <laughs> you ladies me, good. Ladies first, you say. Yeah. Um, for me, I would say it's being like seriously not being kitschy at all i'm blessed i'm truly blessed i mean there are times when i'm like you know a bit like sometimes confused and like what am i like in real life situations but i feel truly blessed because a lot of the times when i'm facing hard situations I get to see my parents in me, my Ethiopian heritage of being like centered and not impulsive and very respectful. And people sometimes don't understand why I react to situations the way I am because come on, I'm Israeli. I need to have like more chutzpah and stuff. <laughs> but. <laughs> But I have this like blessing of being Ethiopian and being like really like cool and humbled at a lot of times. And I make a lot of, I think, I hope <laughs> good decisions. And having that said that, I'm like, I'm also Israeli and we have like this for like spicy and, and we know how to have fun and how to live life to the fullest because, hey, who knows what's gonna happen i mean we still live in israel but like in one word like i said it before i'm truly blessed blessed abeba i would love thank you very much i abeba, i would love to hear your answer it's kind of hard i feel like i i relate to everything everyone is saying here uh but for me uh if we go back to what uh, one said before that she was proud of being Ethiopian as a kid. Uh, I, I actually felt like more of like Naftali. I was uh, basically, uh, I'm ashamed to say that, but I was a bit ashamed to be Ethiopian. I've always tried to be accepted in the Israeli community with my white friends. Uh, and as a kid, I, I thought that I should uh, give up on my heritage on my roots for being accepted so i haven't learned the language and i never tried speaking with my parents when they spoke with us amaric i was always no speak hebrew with me uh but for me uh the change happened through music like it was actually in a late uh when i was 20 21 uh, i started uh actually uh working in the music uh building my dream and really going forward with it and i started studying music and through my studies i've discovered the african music and i really fell in love and that was uh what made me go back and start ask, asking questions and realizing how powerful and how 
uh, big heroes my family are, my parents are, uh, and discovering all the stories that I didn't know. Uh, so I'm really proud. I'm very super proud to be Ethiopian. Um, yes. I, I, I feel like <laughs> it once said, I think the values that the Ethiopian community has, I wish that we could spread it all over. Respect, being humble, and seeing the, the person in front of you, no matter who he is. Um, and I really cherish and appreciate, and I thank my parents for giving me that. Amen to that. I agree with everything you said. Thank you very much. Naftali, now it's your turn. Yeah. Tell us about your experience. Yeah, well, uh, well, when I was a kid, I had a lot of identities problem. Uh, in one hand, I was a still proud Israeli, proud Jew. In the other hand, I didn't like the color of my skin. Uh, it's not easy to be a black man in a country that a vast majority are white. Um, and I was asking myself all the time or asking God, why did you brought me to this world if it's not easy to be a black man in a country that our vast majority is white, even though we live among our brothers and sisters. Um, so I had those identities problem. But when I arrived to the age of 16, 17, uh, something happened and that thing was music, reggae music. Reggae music is a music that teach you about you yourself as a black man. And this is something that I never had because in school, no one told us about that. So it started with the music. By the way, you see, I have dreadlocks, right? Yes. So I have dreadlocks because when I was 16, 17, I remember that my generation were looking for role models within our community. And we didn't find no one. And we had to go, some had to go to the, to the United States of America and saw Tupac or Biggie as role models because they are black people who did it. And I'm, an, I'm not a big fan of rap music. I'm a big fan of reggae music. So I saw this guy, Robert Nesta Marley, as someone that I can look up to. Um, and then in the age of 30, I did something else. I went to a root strip back to Ethiopia. And over there, I saw the beautiful country of Ethiopia. I went back to the village that I was born. I saw friends of my family. They told me about the Jewish community that used to meet there. And I came back a different person. I came back even more proud Jew, proud Israeli. But in the first time, a proud black man. Black is beautiful. Okay. And, yes. um, and, and I had confidence. And Marcus Garvey said, um, if you don't have confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. So when you know who you are, you know you're worth something. And today I feel blessed and I'm proud to be black man and to be a Jewish man and to be an Israeli. This is me and I'm proud of it. Thank you very much, Naftali. I feel like connect to every single thing that each one said. Uh, I believe that is being black. It's all about education, how your parents, how your society is treating you and your ability to know your history and gives you a lot of pride. And uh, I think each one of us in different ways or in a different uh, age, understand the power of our heritage, a power of our story as a people and use this story in order to gain self-confidence to who we are, who are our parents and what our heritage is symbolized as in black women, a black man in Israeli and being a, a, a strong part of our society. Um, so I will ha have a couple of questions from the audience. Thank you very much for uh, so far. Uh, so the first question uh, I was uh, asked uh, Abeva, and the yes. question is about your military service. Uh, service. Have you done military service? Which position? And what do you feel this uh, have contribute? Oh, okay. Yeah, I did a military service. Actually, I would say that I tried to uh, get to the military bands that they have here in Israel, and I didn't make it, but that's okay. 
<laughs> okay, are you sure? <laughs> I'm okay. I, I'm okay with that. No, um, uh, but I had to do my military service on the borders, uh, checking uh, people coming in and out of Israel. It was really hard for me. I didn't like the job. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't well with it, like spiritually, mentally. Uh, but but I did it, and after a few months, I think nine months, I had a big, uh, a serious car accident that I was uh, released from the military uh, to recover from it for like a, a year and a half. So I didn't get the chance to finish it, but I definitely started. Thank you very much. I want the same question for you. Can you tell us a little bit about your military service? Your position, what do you feel about it? So I don't know how to say it in, in English, but I was like, Sambatit, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For everyone like, that doesn't know Hebrew or I, <laughs> military terms, <laughs> tell a little bit about what the position holds. So it is like, uh, you call it Hamal in Hebrew, which is like, um, War, war room or operation room where you uh i i my service was in a military base up north and it was like this uh huge 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 uh base of um um how do you say it like a weapon arsenal the weapons arsenal. Would be like yeah like that and uh so i was like in this operation room and i was um um, I, I had like soldiers patrolling the base, um, just keeping everything safe uh, and making sure no uh, burglar, burglars or, uh, you know, um, people who are not supposed to be inside or God forbid terrorists enter the base. And I was like, just making sure everyone is okay, everything is okay um with the with the crew we are sending to uh to uh protect the base so this is what i did it was actually a really really good um time in my life i got the chance to like meet all of israel you know what i'm talking about like in the army you just meet so many different people that you wouldn't meet like in life so it was amazing to me and I got the chance to do something for our country so it was uh, I, I, I really appreciated that time. Amazing, thank you very much. Naftali, can you tell us a little bit about your military service? Yeah, um, so my older brothers were paratrooper. Uh, another brother of mine was the first Ethiopian officer in the IDF in 1986. He was a oh, trooper, yeah. So I felt like a pressure that, oh, I need to go there as well. But I decided that I would do what I want to do. And I became a firefighter in the Air Force. Um, and it was, for me, the experience in the Army was amazing because, uh, as I said before, I grew up in a neighborhood that her vast majority were Ethiopian Jews. And there I'm going to the Army and I'm becoming a minority. Um, <laughs> And it was a great experience. I have still lots of friends from the days in the army. And uh, yeah, it was good time, good time. Today I'm a soldier in, well, you know, I'm always saying um, today I have a daughter in the age of four and a half years old. And I wish that when she will be 18, she will not have to go to the army. Uh, because we true, truly want peace and love in this area. But we also understand that we have to protect our country. But I hope that in 40, 14 years from now, we will achieve peace. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. And um, I connected to actually what each one said, and especially what Naftali mentioned, um, in military service, a lot of people looked at it as, as this like 
only about the compact or the wars. This is the idea that people has. Uh, but uh, because Israel has a mandatory recruiting law, that means that you actually, when you go to the military, you meet a lot of different population in society. So it doesn't matter what is your background, where you come from, like what your parents do, um, you will end up in the same unit and anything that, uh, and the only thing that will determine your success will be how hard you work. For me personally, I know that a lot of my self-confidence came from the military service, being an officer, getting like the a big role, big responsibility, understanding that I can achieve a lot. There's a lot of things that uh, came uh, specifically from my military service. Um, a shift to a different subject. I'm very interesting to know, guys. If any one of you uh, returned for uh, uh, to Ethiopia, I visited Ethiopia since. Yeah. Not yet, unfortunately, for me. Okay. <laughs> well, Naftali. Uh, yeah, I went back three times. Um, by the way, Ethiopia and Israel are not that far. It's <laughs> much more. It's four hours flying and. Um, yeah, I return and um, it's a beautiful, beautiful country with beautiful culture and beautiful people. And when you go there, you understand why Ethiopian Jews have such a beautiful culture and such a, such a beautiful um, way of thinking about life. So yeah, I recommend visit Ethiopia. I agree. I want to have you visit. No, I haven't, unfortunately, but I have to soon once this COVID-19 ends. <laughs> I agree with you. I've been in December, like a few, mamash, a few, mamash, a few months before <laughs> <laughs> the no, corona no, started. No, no, no. <laughs> and the corona started, and I agree with Naft Naftali, when you go uh, to Ethiopia, you feel like the Ethiopian time, everything is much relaxed, everyone is happy and content, and there is something very nice about the atmosphere, and just uh, being in a, in a place that is so connected to your heritage. Uh, what brings me to the next question, um, Abeba, uh, where do you define yourself? Do you see yourself as Ethiopian? Do you see yourself as Israeli? As a combination of two? Uh, definitely a combination of two, and even more. <laughs> we'll go to different. Uh, but actually, when people ask me, and a lot of people ask me that question, maybe because I'm in the music industry, I would have to say that I uh, describe myself Ethiopian Israeli. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit of rebellion act uh, <laughs> from my side and even like owning it after such a long time of me being afraid of it um, and, and not being able to accept it and ashamed of it, I decided that I wanted it. Like, I feel like it's something that is more of who I am and more of who I want to be. And that's how I would describe myself. Thank you. That is very interesting. I want, can you tell me about your role models uh, in the industry, music? Oh, so many of them. <laughs> but I think... Um, <laughs> tell me about me, one. <laughs> one of them, I would say... Uh, it would have to be Stevie Wonder. He is like my beloved. Woo! I just, uh, I, I don't know what is it that I need to do in order to just watch, watch his show, like just, just for one more time and I'll be, I'll be content. <laughs> I just love that man. But you know, a lot of influences, of course, of Ethiopian music and Mahmoud Ahmed and you know, but yeah, Stevie Wonder would be the one for me. Right, go ahead. <laughs> great one. <laughs> great, great one. And Definitely. Naftali, can you tell me about your role models? It doesn't have to be music, of course. Uh, well, so I mentioned before uh, the great Robert Nesta Mali. But my role, mo role models will be my parents, uh, you know, my father, my mother, uh, to see them coming from a country that they were living 50, 60 years, coming to a new country, 
trying to do anything they do in order to bring us good education and to raise us well. And they, for me, they are my role models, you know? That is true. Thank you very much. Um, I think a lot of, most of us here are a generation that either was born in Ethiopia and came very early or were, uh, or were born uh, in Israel. And uh, the way you see it, I'm very interested in this question of Eva is for you. Um, would you think that the culture of Ethiopia is still um, is still ingrained in a lot of us, like the uh, the food, the language, knowing it's the still story. what? Sorry, it's ingrained. It's a part of our identity. For you think about your children, or you look at your siblings. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> it's a <laughs> bit. It's it's getting a little far from from it because we live here in Israel. If I see my nephew, he doesn't know even a word in Amharic. But for me, uh, I would have to say that I, I find it as a big uh, goal for me to keep my heritage, to learn the language that I uh, um, didn't want to learn when I was a kid, and now I'm doing my homework. Uh, for me to be able to pass it on to my kids, I think the story of my, our community, the story of my family personally, I would, uh, I, I think it's, very much important to pass it on. It's something that each one of us can learn from. And I think it's, it's really important to keep. Uh, but I would definitely say that I think it's half and half, you know? Some people feel like really important for them to keep the religion, the, the, the heritage of the Ethiopian community. And I, I would say that my main uh, hope is that the Ethiopian culture would be part of the Israeli culture. That way we would all remember it and it would stay here. I agree, very good. I want, what you will be the, the biggest message you will pass down to your children, ch children from our culture? Like what is the thing that is the most important for you to preserve? I, th I think uh, being humble being humble, being grateful, being thankful. Um, earlier, Aveva talked about, I think it was Aveva who talked about her mother being always grateful for be, coming to Israel, whatever it is that happens. And you know, she didn't exactly get what she dreamt of, but this is something that represents all of our parents and ancestors. And I think the Beta is a, the Jewish, Ethiopian Jewish um, community is about that, is about being humble and being grateful for what we have. So this is something I would definitely want my people to, my, my people, my uh, children. <laughs> and my people They would well. be your people. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> they better be. <laughs> Um, uh, Naftali, this is a question for you. Uh, is there any remaining of Ethiopian Jews in Ethiopia? And what is their situation right now? Yes, yeah, so in Ethiopia today, there is 7,500 Ethiopian Jews that's still waiting in the camps in Gondor and in Addis Ababa to come to Israel. Some call them Falashmura. Uh, Falashmura is a group of people that their forefather converted to Christianity in the late 19th century because of many different reasons, some of them by force. Um, and today they want to come back into Judaism. The situation is that, um, and I'm very happy to say that today we have Ethiopian minister of Aliyah and I hope that she will bring them as soon as she can because they are waiting there for too long. And there is a situation of mother who is still waiting in Ethiopia while she's having her children here in Israel and she can see them. So I hope that very soon, the whole 7,500 will come and reunite with us here in Israel. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Um, a question for, I will start with Aveva and then we do the runs. Uh, a lot of people criticize Israel. There is not a lot of people, let me reframe. Uh, there is criticism about Israel and um, 
uh, about racism, the, mis the discrimination, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of time those uh, criticism goes for the anti uh, presenting anti-Semitic uh, opinion and people abusing the struggle of Ethiopian Jews in order to justify uh, the criticism. Uh, what do you think about the criticism of the Israeli state in general and specifically uh, to the Ethiopian community? What do I think about the Israeli? Uh, sorry, I missed some of the words. Yeah, when there is, oh, sorry, <laughs> I will rephrase. Uh, what do you think about the criticism of the Israeli mm -hmm. state when a lot of, when it presents an anti-Semitic idea as of Israel doesn't have the right to exist, um, old fashioned opinions about Jews. Okay, so you disappear uh, for some of that time, but uh, if I understand right, you wanted me to talk about uh, the criticism about the Israeli uh, government towards yeah. the Ethiopian community? Racism? Uh, both, both, both about the Ethiopian community and in general um, criticism that might be uh, uh, constructed as anti-Semitism, believing that Israel doesn't have to, the right to exist. Well, I'm, I'm living here in Israel, so I would have to say that I definitely believe that Israel should exist. Uh, there are a lot of things that we could uh, maybe handle and act better. And I think there's a lot of work to do. Um, the things that I'm more familiar with is uh, things about our community, the Ethiopian community, and that would be uh, talking about racism uh, and uh, the way that the government handled uh, the Ethiopian aliyah and the way that they chose to put them in groups and not uh, uh, spread them all over Israel in different places, uh, not in the center. Um, I would say that there are a lot of things that Israel uh, could um, change and should work on it. Racism is something that is alive and still here all over. Um, I actually have a song that I wrote about it. And um, this is something that we meet in our lives daily, on a daily basis. Uh, for me, I would say I think it, it's much uh, easier uh, than a black person. I would uh, believe that Naftali would talk about it more. Uh, but a lot of things that are happening here in Israel shouldn't happen. Uh, and I find that we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, if it's about the Ethiopian community, uh, different ethnic community, the Arab community here in Israel. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And Naftali, do you want to elaborate about that? So I think that, uh, you know, we are in the COVID-19 time these days. And the biggest disease of the world is racism and anti-Semitism. And it's been there for a very long, long time. And um, First, I think that we in Israel have to accept that there is racism, discrimination, and police brutality. You see, when you have someone who has alcohol problem, he has to admit that he has a problem if he wants to make himself better. So we, as a society here, we have to know that there is a problem here. Once we will know that, we will try to find ways to attack that. Um, and, you know, white people got tricked, black people got tricked. It's a problem, it's, 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 it's a problem that belongs to everyone because there is a lot of white people that was raised like that and educate like that. And a lot of black people that have this um, slavery mentality still within them. And we, we have to work on that toward a better world. Uh, so this is, this is, by the way, this is why you do what you do, Ashagar. This is why Aviva and Hiwan do what they do with music. And this is why I do what I do. We try to educate people. We want to change. I'm not sure we will delete racism from the world, but we can try to minimize it. 
I totally agree uh, what you just said. I think as Ethiopian Jews and Israelis, uh, uh, Israel is our home, it's our country, we love it, we are proud Zionists, we understand the connection to the ground, I will understand the history and what our parents and grandparents have had to go through in order to be here. So we cannot disrespect their, uh, their uh, effort and sacrifice. And what we do here is live in our life as Israel, proud Israelis and at the same time working very hard in order to, uh, to make Israel as a better society, as a better country. And this is both battles that we always face, being a proud Zionist and still being able to be criticized, uh, criticized about Israel and be able to make it a better country than it, it is right now. Uh, so I agree with everything that has been said. Um, uh, final question I want to ask you guys. What what a book, a movie uh, you will recommend people uh, to read and listen to um, about the history of Ethiopian Jews? Uh, so I will, yeah, yeah, I will recommend the book of Dr. Jacob Faitalovich, The Journey to the Falasha. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Why this book? Just wondering. Because it's a book that um, I guess for the first time, really, someone who came out from Europe to Ethiopia to really uh, study the history and the culture of the Ethiopian Jews um, and Dr. Jacob Faitalovich has a lot to do with us being here today, uh, even though it was in the beginning of the 20th century, but still um, we have a lot of points of us being here today. And the book is, is a beautiful book that tells the story of uh, different communities in different areas in Ethiopia, in Tigray, in Gondor, uh, and to see the difference between the communities uh, it, it teaches you a lot about your community from different point of views, from different points of areas, because it's not all Ethiopian Jews are the same. There are, you know, areas that they behave like that. In that area, they behave like that. The government behave different to different Jews in different areas. So it's a very interesting book. The Thank Journey you. to the Falasha, yeah. Thank you. Abeva, do you have a recommendation for us? Uh, the, first, the first thing that came up uh, is the, a movie called, it, it's an Israeli movie called uh, Red Leaves in English, mm -hmm. maybe? Yeah. Right? Alima Dumim? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's a beautiful movie. I think it would show a little bit more about the identity problems we talked about before. like arriving to Israel, uh, coping with the struggles of uh, language barrier, um, uh, the, the parents and the kids that were born here and the parents that came from Ethiopia and the difficulties that they had. Um, so I would recommend that movie. Yeah. Thank Great you. Uh, Iowa, do you have a, a recommendation for us? So I have this like movie we watched when we grew up if you remember it was called hamsa or the journey <laughs> in, in 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 english it was like this beautiful really naive uh uh one of the first independent ethiopian movies that were made here in israel so i recommend that because it just tells the story and you get to see i i, I remember i was so excited to see like black images on my screen who were Ethiopian Jews. It was like, oh my God. <laughs> Up to that point, all I saw was like uh, the Cosby's and you know, <laughs> <laughs> African American. But to me, it was like, oh my God. But you know, when I grew up, I watched this, um, it called Falasha Exile of Black Jews, Beta Israel. It's like, and uh, I think it's, um, and, and, like British 
production, I think. Uh, and what I really loved about it is like this short video clips of um, of real life Ethiopian Jews filmed in Ethiopia during like prior to the Aliyah, to them coming to Israel. So it's a to us, for me as someone who was born in Israel, it's a it, it's the chance to get a glimpse of what it was like for them to to be there and what their lives look like. And I, they look so beautiful. So I'm like, oh my God, they're so beautiful. Yeah. You so. sold the movie, I wanna see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, I, this is what I wanna see after we finish the Zoom. So I know I said this is the last question, but I wanna ask another one. So sorry, I'm gonna go off script. I really wanna <laughs> know where each, yeah, this is what I do. I, I really wanna know uh, where each of you guys see yourself in uh, 10 years from now. What do you oh, wish for yourself? <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> You're saying the hardest question for the, you know. Of course, so uh, you start. Me? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my God, oh my God. Where do I see it? I, I need a minute. Let me just wrap my hand around that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Naftali, you wanna jump in and help us? Yeah, I just want to say something before that. We use the term falasha a long time in this session today. And uh, I just want to clarify that to the people that listen in to us. Uh, falashas means a uh, stranger, someone who is locked down all right. And this is how the population in Ethiopia, the non-Jews, nicknamed us. We called yeah. ourselves Beta Israel. And it's very, very important. People will understand exactly. that. Um, as far as I can see, I don't really see myself 10 years from now. I like to see a year <laughs> from now, two years from now. But if you ask that, um, I think that 10 years from now, I'm not a politician, but I know that if I want to make change, real change, I have to be part of this game. So I don't know if you will sue, see me with suit and tie and all this. <laughs> but yeah, politician, yeah. <laughs> Taking down it. the last thought and everything. I'm actually No, really no, I, I, will, I, I, will be, I will be a politician with dreadlocks, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, will not, I will not cut them. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. I see, great. Abeba, what about you? Uh, as Naftali said, I don't see myself 10 years from now. It's, it's too uh, scary. I don't know. <laughs> I just live a day by day, you know, I, really I, still try, <laughs> I still like, I still see myself as a kid, even though I'm not, <laughs> but, um, I would say that I do hope to continue and make my music. Do hope to get and reach to more and more people to educate them more, uh, for love and equality. And, um, hopefully I'll have, a, maybe a kid or two. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the music industry keeps you young. That's why you still feel like a kid. That's the of the music right? So if, if I won't quit, I'll feel it as a kid. Uh, right. Always. Yeah. <laughs> so Shari, last. Oh, what, 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 where do you see yourself in? No, years? we have one last person. Okay. Uh oh, oh. Hey, you want to have an answer? Yeah. Hey, one, tell us. So I truly relate to both Naftali and Aveva. Um, I, I think it's too scary is the the right you know way to describe it. But I will be like super super happy to continue doing my music and reaching out to people uh, all over the world. Of course, in Israel as well, and just you know picking whatever it is on my mind and uh, yeah. This is what I hope. Great, thank you very much, you guys. Uh, where, where, I had... do you see, where do you see yourself in 10 years? You have to answer as well. Oh, yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect this to happen. Um, I, as everyone else, I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna be, but I know that I'm gonna uh, pursue what I love is the education, uh, connecting people, 
telling our history in order to bring people together as a, a using storytelling in order to promote unity and uh, understanding between different uh -oh. Communities. This is something that I aspire to do and I love to do, and I hope I will be there. Love it. The one thing we didn't talk about, by the way, I guess we can go on forever, is Ethiopian yeah. food and cuisine, which is we have a little Ethiopia here in LA. Oh, a and should talk about it. And you, you, yeah. have, you, you eat with your hands, and you got the, I don't what's the drink <laughs> called? Uh, in general. So, Ethiopian, whoever haven't tried Ethiopian food, this is definitely the yeah. best food you will ever have. It's super tasty, super healthy, and it has so many good things for you. And every time you eat Ethiopian food, you are much more happy and much more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so go try it. I'm now. I promise you, go try it. Uh, Ethiopian food, you actually, yes, you eat with your hand because it's about feeling the food and connecting with your people. If you have uh, injera, it's big, why? Because injera is meant to be shared. Ethiopian food, you eat together with your friends, with your family, the way we are as a community, we're always together. This is the way we eat, and this is our food also. I love it. You could be the advertisement, there it is. Ethiopian food <laughs> makes you happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, I'm telling you. I, I, I know. I've eaten it. It's amazing. Anyhow, thank you guys so much. Honestly, as, as this discussion showed, we can't choose the color of our skin, but we can choose to learn and understand and, you know, and, and, and really educate each other. And that's what it's about because we're all one people. And yes. we got to always remember that. So I hope everybody else remembers that. And uh, thank you guys so much. This is an amazing discussion. Honestly, I think this is my favorite panel yet. Um, yeah. And for everybody else, Creative Community for Peace, once again, we're a nonprofit organization. So please go to ccfpeace.com, ccfpeace.com. You can donate there. We have tons of other panel discussions coming up. Uh, so stay connected. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and, and we're going to have some really cool events coming. So thank you guys once again. I really appreciate this. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.